Martina. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you very much. Very welcome, everyone. This morning, my name is Martina Murphy, and I am the course director for architecture at Ulster University. And I'm delighted to have Holly Eve, who is one of our uh, year one students, uh, join us this morning. And Holly will uh, go through the presentation with me, and we'll engage and have a chat at the end. And we'll be happy to answer any questions. So welcome uh, this morning. So this morning, what I'd like to do is uh, to inspire you a little about architecture as a career and also what we do at Ulster University. So I'm going to test your knowledge of local architecture, world-class architecture within about a 30 mile radius of us. I'm going to go through what you can expect as an architecture student, uh, why Ulster University as that um, university of choice to do architecture and then I'm going to answer a question which is very common and we get asked very often is what is a portfolio and what do you require in the portfolio for entry to the course so we'll go through some ideas there and then what next um, what uh, are the questions would you like to ask the chat through and Johnny will uh, kindly close us off so Again, you're welcome. And uh, let's start uh, maybe Holly with a bit of a quiz. So hope you're oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> on a local architecture, which is world class uh, competition winning uh, in Northern Ireland. Um, where is this Holly? Oh, I'm trying to wrap my brain from the last time I saw this building. I want to say it's somewhere near the Giants Causeway. Good. Am I Visitor Center? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well done. This is the iconic uh, Visitor Center at the Giants Causeway by Hennigan Penn Architects. It was an international competition for a truly world class uh, building which has won a huge number of awards and very highly uh, recognized across the world. And it's within a uh, 30 40 mile of, uh, of all of us. Another one, Holly. Oh, Lyric Theatre, it's a beautiful building. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. A really creative, uh, dynamic interior. And this is the, um, the Lyric Theatre by O'Donnell Tumi Architects. Again, uh, a competition winning entry um, for an iconic building that transformed uh, the Stromulus area of Belfast. That is the Mac by Hall McKnight Architects. Absolutely. And why should we know it, Holly? Because it is right beside us. I can see it from my studio. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the Mac in Belfast that, with that iconic uh, lighthouse tower uh, by Hackett Hall and McKnight Architects, who again are uh, award-winning architects and uh, engage in the studios very frequently with our students and our staff to give tutorials and to work alongside us in the course, which is a great uh, opportunity for us to engage with world-class architects. Holly. Titanic Belfast. Yes, yes. All of those visitors that you've brought to, to Northern Ireland have always wanted to go and see the new uh, Titanic uh, Visitor Centre uh, out by the, the docks. And this is the interior of it uh, by Todd Architects. Belfast based practice, but again with hugely international um, projects across the world. And they were selected uh, to carry out this uh, building project, which has become uh, the iconic building for the Titanic uh, across the world and the, the legacy of that, of that ship. Trick one, Holly. Oh, goodness, that's a new campus right beside our original building, isn't it, in Belfast? Absolutely, absolutely. This is, uh, this is the uh, York Street campus, the new Belfast campus for Ulster University, literally across the street, as Holly has said, from uh, where we are currently, and which will be part of the course when you come to the university in 2021. It's currently under construction, so what you're seeing at the minute is an artist representation. Uh, the building is already got the envelope, the foundation has finished and they're commencing on the roof and all of that glass panel that you can see there is currently underway. 
and this will be part of the new Belfast campus in which architecture is part of and all of those other disciplines that we will be working alongside will be part of this building. So this is a visual representation, some images of what the interior is going to look like, hugely uh, impressive space inside uh, where public can come in, where students will mill and have coffee and chat and have lectures in and around the, the classrooms around. So a fabulous building and is part of the university's development, which we will be part of when you come to Ulster University. We already have modern architecture students, studios uh, within the campus, and these will be expanded with generous individual student spaces. Digital multimedia workshops, all of this will be uh, a state-of-the-art uh, building uh, for the university in Belfast, and you'll be part of this. So what can I expect? What can you expect as an architecture student uh, at Ulster University? Um, architecture is very different to a lot of subjects. Uh, you may be familiar and think of university as large tiered uh, lecture theatres where you come and you sit to maybe a hundred people in, in one go when you have lectures and exams. And that's not how we teach architecture. Architecture is about studio-based learning. So these are the studios at Ulster University, and this is where you meet and you engage with students and tutors on a one-to-one -one basis. Every week, twice a week, you discuss, you share, you create ideas, you make models, and architecture is about learning through making, about creating and discussing. So we talk about a studio teaching model, 100% coursework assessed. There's no formal examinations, as you might know in school or in other facilities. It's about learning and creating in a studio environment. So tutors will sit down one-to-one -one with you as students uh, twice a week and look at your designs and help you look at precedents and ideas and theory and consider your ideas into a creative building. Small group design reviews, you can see some of them there on level four uh, with a tutor uh, with his students uh, looking and evaluating their ideas. And studio discussions, all about putting your work off, discussing it, sharing ideas, and producing the final presentation. So that's how we teach architecture as a design. But we also have other subjects a challenging subjects, as well as the design module. We have design theory and communication, which are important areas to understand how architecture has developed through the years, through the ages, to create uh, ideas and precedents that we use today. We also look at visual culture, how we read and analyze spaces and make creative designs from uh, concepts in the world around us. Also technology, very important to know how our designs become reality and communication and environment. Sustainability is hugely important uh, for architects and for the built environment and it's really important that our students include that as part of their designs. And professional context, whilst you come in as a student of architecture don't forget, there's obviously that career path ahead of you. Uh, being an architect, being in practice, engaging with large projects, um, both locally and across the world, and having that strong opportunity for employment. And professional context establishes you as an architect, gives you that understanding of how to practice, and how to manage a business of architecture. So very often I'm asked, uh, how can I prepare to be a student of architecture? That's a really good question. So perhaps if you're coming in this year, or perhaps you're coming in next year, how can I already be thinking about being an architecture student? And a number of the things, Holly will know three big uh, key areas that we encourage mm -hmm. constantly of our students is to read, to read books, to read monographs of buildings, 
to understand the great architects of the past, how they thought, how they created their designs, how they changed the society they lived in through their designs. Really important that you have an understanding of architecture and books are a great resource for that. That you um, read and evaluate and consider and share and discuss with your friends and family. Also, um, buy a sketchbook. Really important uh, to sketch and draw continuously, looking at the world around you. So I need to think, how do I, how do I actually see that building or that landscape? And communicating that through freehand sketch, painting, photography, all great, great ideas. Also, go and see exhibitions. Um, can be fashion, can be design, can be art, but really important to be looking and immersing yourself in the artistic discipline. That is part of architecture. Also, we encourage travel. Travel is really important uh, for architecture. Obviously not at the moment because of the COVID-19, but to travel even small distances as well as uh, further afield. It's really important to see how other cultures operate the buildings and uh, designs are created in other cultures and communities. And these are a couple of images of uh, our students from 2018. We did Barcelona as a school trip and uh, Paris in 2019. And we also took the students to Paris um, as a school trip. We also did Venice, Hamburg, Chicago. And uh, so it's really important that we look outside our own world and we'll help the students to, to do that. So why Ulster University? Why Ulster University as a place to study architecture and to engage in the super studio way of working? Well, at Ulster, we have developed what we call the super studios. Um, it's unique, it's the first of its kind as a teaching, as a way of teaching, we call it a teaching model, first of its kind in the UK. And essentially, it's so important in that model, in the studio, that all year groups are taught together. So what are super studios about? They're about collective working, students working together, first year, second year, third year, masters. It's about model making, it's about making and creating ideas from, can be car, can be balsa wood, can be concrete, but continuously making and looking at your ideas in 3D. By drawing, drawing together, showing your work, discussing your work with second year, third years, MR students together in those studios at Ulster University as a super studio environment and discussion, always talking and discussing your work amongst each other. And that is done at Ulster across all the year groups. And it's not intimidating. I know that Holly will maybe uh, say a little bit about that, but it means that first years are looking at second years and looking at masters learning, and masters students are mentoring and supporting the other years, exactly as you would do in an architect's practice. And that's the model, architect's practice for teaching about architecture. As part of our teaching about architecture, I mentioned it's really important uh, that we train up our students for employment, for the world of work. So we invite in practitioners uh, for networking days, for speed dating days, and we give them the opportunity to discuss with the students about working in a practice and for the students to ask questions. What's it like to work in practice? And this is really important quite early in the course, second and third years, both have the opportunity to do this so that at the end of third year, they go into practice for a year. When they finish that year in practice, they go into the masters and that's year five for two years, and then they qualify as an architect. 
So employment is really important for us at Ulster. Employment and practice experience, we embed in the course very early on because it's important that our students graduate with the right skills, both the design skills and the technical skills and the work skills to make great employees. And that's critical for us as a course and as a university. Really important, we support our students. We recognize their achievements every step of the way. So we have continuously that one-to-one -one support of you from day one through the studio leads, through studies advisors, through myself as the course director, continuously there to support you in your studies. And we like to put those great achievements up on Instagram, Twitter, and social media. That's really important for us. And really important to see some past student successes as well. Uh, Micah Jones, you may have seen on the uh, Channel 4 programme, uh, Grand Designs. Uh, he's in practice uh, a number of years now. He graduated in 2012 from the Masters. And he um, incredibly got a wonderful building, his own house, um, starred in the Grand Designs programme. And I put there the, uh, the quote that Kevin McLeod made of the, of the building, which was one of the finest rural buildings I've seen, pragmatic, ecological, unpretentious and full of joy. A great guy, Micah, inspirational and really uh, developed his time when he was at Ulster into being creative and inspirational in his design. Also, uh, Casitas, uh, last year won the winner of the 2019 RSUA President's Silver Medal Award. This is a huge accolade uh, for architects, um, in, uh, sorry, for architecture students uh, in schools of architecture across the UK. And so we're delighted that it's Ulster University has won it in the past three years running. We also get important to support our students through awards and prizes continuously to set the bar for them to achieve great things. So we have a range of scholarships and prizes in place to encourage the students to participate and to stretch their ideas and their thinking and obviously uh, to win awards for their CVs. Yeah, so we have a number of awards which are um, given out annually. The President Medals Awards, the White Ink Architecture Award, uh, which is called Smart Thinking, a Specialist Joinery Award, the Ard Mackel Prize, and the Professor Clark Prize. And these are all encouraging um, inspiration and creativity by the students from the very outset from year one, year two, year three. So what do I need to enter? Architecture at Ulster University. So you can see there, it's 300 UCAS points. And what's really important is that you will be required to submit a portfolio, except where you have GCSE Art, or GCSE Art and Design at grade A or higher. The question that very often gets asked is, what is a portfolio? What is a portfolio? What do I include in a portfolio? So I've put down some suggestions uh, that might help. Um, very important for architecture, that it's that balance between science and art. So in terms of science, technology and drawing and computer drawing, that's important, but equally important is that creative understanding of art and design of textiles, of ceramics, of the wider world of art and design. And we want to see that in a portfolio. So it's important that we see freehand uh, sketching, 
pencils, charcoals, pen sketches of buildings around you. Color drawings, paintings, watercolors, pastels. Lovely to see that as part of a portfolio. Ceramics, sculptures, photography, product design, pictures and photographs of models, of printmaking, or sketches of figures and still life. And even landscape studies, all of this can be included as part of a portfolio. And within that can be computer drawings, technical drawings, CAD drawings, BIM drawings, all of those make a comprehensive uh, portfolio for architecture. Some ideas uh, from last year's entrance into year one, uh, a selection together, we can see some sketching, some painting, some printmaking, some um, computer CAD work, and some model making. A range of ideas and formats should be in a portfolio to show that range of ability for students of architecture. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce you to Holly. Holly Eve. Hello. <laughs> one of our first year students. Uh, she's a great student. And uh, I'm going to ask you some Holly, if you're ready. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, not that we're not prepped, but can you tell us uh, why you chose? Uh, architecture and architecture at Ulster? Um, I chose architecture as a, a career path, I suppose, um, because I had originally wanted to become some form of artist when I was in school. And I went to quite an academic school where there wasn't that much guidance apart from an art teacher or an artist um, in terms of pathways if you studied art and design. Um, and then I came across architecture and it really is that balance between having the freedom of being immersed in sort of the design sector, but also knowing that there is enough um, academic study attached as well that you can have a very steady career if you want it, um, if you study this, this subject, which is really appealing. Um, and in terms of the course, I, I chose Ulster specifically, mainly because first off of the studio system, um, it was a bit daunting at first to think, oh goodness, there's a course that doesn't really follow the rules that, like everyone else does in terms of teaching architecture. But having the freedom to, from day one, no matter how junior you are in that department, to have a say in your learning and to choose what kind of section of architecture you would like to study uh, from the get-go, I thought, above all, show trust in students and respect in students and then being able to choose what they want to learn. Um, which I thought was a, a great attitude to be part of. Um, and the studios, the studio spaces were gorgeous, you know, especially this year I was part of the Paris trip. And as part of the Paris trip, we got to see some of the studios in a Parisian architect school, quite a, a renowned one. Um, and one thing that really surprised myself and my fellow first years was that they're quite nomadic in the way that they have to work. If you have a class, you don't have a set space. If you have a class on a Monday or a Tuesday, you have to carry your drawing board in and carry it out again. And that's actually quite normal. It was very surprising that we sort of chose, or we took our studio spaces for granted, I suppose, that we had these set desks that had our names on it and everything was safe and everything was ours. So that was um, a massive draw for me as well in Belfast. Thank you very much, Holly. That's really interesting. I didn't even know half of that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Lovely to hear that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what did you include in your portfolio? Uh, I, I a massive range of things. Um, I had a lot of work from a foundation uh, diploma I'd done at Belfast Met. Um, it's one thing I would say if you're humming and hawing between doing a foundation course before architecture, you don't need it, but I really benefit, benefited from it. Um, so a lot of work from there and a lot of sketchbook work. One thing that I was told in the open day was that, you know, the final uh, piece isn't always the most important bit showing your process from idea to final piece is almost more important because being able to show how you think and, and how you work out your ideas is, is really important in architecture. So that was um, a big part of my portfolio. Um, I had a good bit of sculpture in there as well. I had sculptures of faces in there. I was a bit worried about that, but it ended up being a great choice because I later found out that my tutors really appreciated that I had spent so much time trying to understand form and space. 
and how light falls on materials and things like that. So yeah, a lot of uh, sketches, a lot of sculpture um, and a lot of drawings that focused on the quality of lines as well, a lot of line work. Um, but yeah, massive, massive range of stuff in there. Lovely, excellent, absolutely. What are you, your year one now, what are you enjoying mm -hmm. about the course at this point in time, Holly? And maybe what are your concerns, fears, excitements about uh, the next two years? Uh, <laughs> right now, okay. What am I enjoying right now? Um, well, even before right now, one of the one of my favorite things this year has been the visual or design theory and communication module. We had it right at the beginning of the year and it set me up for the rest of the year in terms of just basic skills that I needed to have a grasp on. So that module was only four or five weeks long and it taught us drafting, it taught us model making, it taught us the importance of the qualities of your drawings and how important a simple sketch is. Uh, so that really set me up for the rest of the year. Um, I love, I know I keep banging on about it, but I really do love the studio system. Um, and it's really come in handy, especially now that um, we've had to go to online classes because of COVID-19. I sat beside a wonderful third year student called Danny Carton the entire year. And I arguably learned just as much from him as I did from my tutors. You know, something as simple as, I don't know how to spell a word to Google it to know how to find out about this technology I want to put in the building. And, you know, I wanted to find out about something called the Trump wall once. I think it was only a couple of weeks ago and Danny ended up taking photos of a magazine and sending them to me straight away. It's, the system is invaluable because you learn so much more than you realize you're even learning at the minute. It's only when you look back and I look back in the year, I go, goodness, I really, really did benefit. Um, from being around the senior years as well. So yeah, studio system, really enjoyed it. Lovely, lovely. Um, I mean, and you're, um, you're such a joy to have in the studio system. <laughs> Great Holly. Thanks. I think, I think Dan and, and all of the rest of the guys would, would say similarly. It's, it's lovely uh, to have your enthusiasm within that. Um, anything else I'm conscious that, that you'd like to, to say to give you the opportunity to um, mm -hmm. take your um, your thoughts? I suppose two, two things I would have been a bit worried about coming in as a first year, especially now, you know, with the elephant in the room, COVID situation. Um, I'm not saying it because I have to, I genuinely mean it, the way the department have kept us informed and worked with us as students to try and keep our lives and our education as normal as possible um, has been incredible from the second that the government shut down universities we were on a, on student rep meetings two days in and those meetings would go on for like three hours to make sure that the students had a voice that we could say every single thing we were worried about and real practical solutions came out of those concerns you know forms were put in place if you were affected by the pandemic and if your work was going to be affected by it um, extensions were fought for <laughs> originally extensions weren't, weren't going to happen and the students really said, look, we need more time. And the, the tutors genuinely fought for us and we've been given extensions. I have another week for work, which is invaluable. Um, so there's been complete transparency with the students. And it's something that I know has made all of us feel a lot better <laughs> in a very scary situation. So no matter what happens next year, I, I feel very safe in the hands of, of architecture in, in Ulster. And, uh, and also, uh, going back to what I enjoyed this year one thing that first years are really really encouraged to do is hand draw for the first year so most of our work is hand drawn pen and pencil um, I was really worried about not knowing the technology um, you know SketchUp and CAD coming into this course you don't need it um, at least for the first year you don't need it and you pick it up as you go along in the course anyway um, and it's something that is really really important so it, you know it, in 10 years time hopefully if you're sitting with a client you'll have the confidence to sit down and roughly draw a sketch just to communicate what the client wants because in your first year and hopefully your second year i know i will keep it on you have the confidence to draw with a like a pencil and a piece of paper and that was something that i really really enjoyed and was really important thank you so much holly thank you no problem um i've learned so much from you <laughs> it's really to, to hear that and let you make those um, comments. Um, I'm going to pass over to, uh, to Johnny, I think. Um, 
for a couple of, of what next options um, and uh, for both uh, 2020 offer holders and, and the entrance. Is that reasonable, Johnny, or shall I just go through some of my contact details? Yeah, if you want to go through a few of your contact details first before I um, bring Perfect, in the yeah. connection, uh, Martina, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem, absolutely. Uh, so obviously those firm offer holders, please make us your firm choice. And, um, and we look very much welcome uh, students coming in uh, next year, 2021. Um, get in touch, get in touch with me by all means. Any questions you have, these are my details on the screen. Um, Please contact me with regard to portfolios or the course or timings or whatever you need to know. And, uh, and I'll be happy to, uh, to come back and uh, answer your questions. And maybe we can chat. <laughs> Johnny, thank you. Yes, no problem. Thank you, Martina. That's fantastic. Uh, great to have an insight there from Holly as well about um, obviously architecture, the facilities, uh, experience uh, to date as well. And uh, we'll touch on some of those in the Q&A for the next five or so minutes. A few questions um, have come through. Um, just before that, uh, Ari gets that, of course, um, of course, you know, um, at our website, um, if you need to check up on anything in terms of the entry requirements, the uh, content of the course, uh, module breakdown, or, of course, to get in contact with any of our colleagues, uh, that's easy to do at ulster.ac.uk. And if you just go to find course, uh, click on the course uh, title and that'll be all those sections uh, as the screen has shown you at this particular time as well. Um, now in terms of our webinars, we have loads coming up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll get another repeat of the architecture one uh, within the next few weeks as well. Obviously it depends on the, uh, the length of the lockdown uh, and of course uh, government regulation. But you'll have plenty of opportunity to view other webinars and to engage with us at Ulster University. Um, at the moment, of course, our open days are still publicised in September. Of course, this will very much depend on uh, advice uh, from local government as well. But at the moment, those dates are there for September. Um, student registration uh, will be over, I suppose, in the next couple of weeks. But again, we'll be taking a lead from government for that as well. As Martina said, of course, you do have her email address there to get in contact. You can just search for that on the website anyway if you can catch it. Uh, all those who have registered and attended today's webinar will be sent a copy of the webinar presentation and a link to the video to re-watch again as well. You can also contact our admissions department um, at Jordanstown Stroke Belfast. There's the telephone number there, uh, OC at N036-6309. Uh, email admissions. And of course, for more information about the University in general, or if you have any queries, you can contact us at study Another very important uh, facility that we have or platform is Unibody. And that allows you to, to speak to or to chat to uh, current students um, like Holly uh, on their experience uh, and to ask all those important questions you, that you might not want to ask us uh, today. That will give you a real feel for what obviously university life is all about, why someone has chosen a particular course or pathway, uh, what sort of background they came from. Um, so that facility on Unibody is pretty good uh, and of course you can search by subject um, to give you a closer look at uh, what those courses are like as well. Um, so okay, on to the chat questions, one of the very first uh, questions that came in Martina, which is, we love these sort of questions when we get them, especially out of career fairs, and it's, it's around the entry requirements. Um, but it, it, somebody's asking the question here, um, Queen's for example asking for three A's, we're asking for why is there a significant difference and, and does it matter um, in that respect as well? Sure, thanks for the question. <laughs> the significant difference um, is uh, that, uh, as you saw from the title slide, is architecture at Ulster is about that best of both worlds. So at Ulster, we are aligned with an art school. So the Belfast School of Art is across the foyer from us, across the atrium from us, uh, where there's design, um, textiles, um, animation, filmmaking, uh, sketching, drawing, ceramics, all of those art-based disciplines are part of the art campus that we as architecture are involved with. 
So that strong art and design element is critical to architecture. And at Ulster, we have that. We also are aligned with the built environment. So the School of the Built Environment is in Jordanstown and will be coming down to the Belfast campus. And within that are the strong science-based disciplines which are important for the architect's role within society and within projects. So, such as construction management, civil engineering, quantity surveying, planning, all of those are really important parts of architecture. So architecture is a mix of both worlds, best of both worlds at Ulster, because it's where science meets art. And also at the built environment disciplines is ATM, Architectural Technology and Management, is a course uh, for architectural technicians who want to come in and be part of that built environment and develop their skills as a technician uh, within an architect's practice, within project management practices, and that's another course aligned to architecture at Ulster. So, Queen's, obviously every university is different in their own right, but we're unique in that we align art and science and we bring those together in the super studios. So in the super studios, all those year groups are being taught together and we bring in staff, tutors, academics from art and from the built environment, from science based disciplines. And the students learn the best of both worlds within the studios at Ulster. And that's our uniqueness uh, as a School of Architecture. Okay, thanks, uh, Martina. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, entry requirements, you know, across all our programmes may differ uh, for various reasons, uh, for benchmarks. Um, and uh, as you say, our, our programmes are unique. Uh, from that respect, of course, being the built environment, the school of architecture, art, all combined there. And some of those questions that um, have been sent through actually relate to that as well. Um, for example, um, is, is maths important? Um, for example, in architecture, can, can it, does it lend itself to it if somebody has that as an A-level? Absolutely. What we're looking for in those entry requirements is we're looking for a strong academic basis across a range of subjects for the reasons that I've just said. So maths are required at GCSE. Uh, it's not one of the specific requirements at A level. Um, maths is part of that science element, which is included within the course uh, as we align into sustainability, into life cycle analysis, learning about structures. All of that is part of technology, but we will teach you those fundamental uh, mathematical principles as part of the technology modules, which are in first and second and third year. So maths at A level is not a specific requirement. It is required at GCSE because we take those foundational requirements and we develop them the way we need them to develop you as architects in those technology modules in first, second and third. Super. Um, question for you, Holly. Um, what surprised you most about the course? What surprised me most? Yes. Oh goodness, I have to think about that one. Um, sorry to put you on the spot. No, no, don't be sorry at all. Um, honestly, uh, I keep saying it, but the, the impact being in the same class as second and third years has had on what I've learned is incredible the, the way it, the course is structured is i still get contact with my full first year class in modules that change every semester so i had a module with my class twice a week um, actually three times a week in my first semester and then i had a module with my class once a week in my second semester so it's this really lovely mix of um focusing on your schoolwork but also the course is very sensitive to the social aspect of the studios as well um, and build your social skills. So I have not only a first year class that I'm very close with, but I also have friends in second and third year who can help me beyond my first year classmates when I need it. And it's, it surprised me how much I learned. And I didn't realize it until I looked back 
but uh, it, it was completely invaluable. And honestly, I think my work would have had a bit of big impact, um, maybe not in the best way, if I had just been in a class of first years the whole way through. That's great, fantastic. Um, of course, everybody's different. You know, it could be facilities, it could be obviously the environment, uh, it could be um, teaching staff. Um, it's great to hear uh, what surprised you most uh, as well. Question here uh, for you, Martina, is uh, could you confirm how long it takes to become an art architect? Um, yes. Yes. Part one, part two, somebody has said here, does it take the full seven years? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I get asked this question all the time and, and I know why, uh, because it does seem like it's, um, it's a lifetime. <laughs> And uh, I know grannies and, and uncles and aunts have said you'll be, you'll be in university for a hundred years, but it's, it's not the case. And let me try to explain just how it, uh, how it breaks down, if that maybe helps to, to answer sure. that. Um, so the undergraduate or the BA that you would come into as a first year is three years long. And that would be a normal average uh, degree in, in any other subject area. And then after that third year, you come out with what we call a part one, part one. And this is the journey to becoming an architect. Some students uh, do their part one and they say, well, actually, I'm not going to be a, a professional architect. I'm going to go off into textiles. I'm going to go off into project management. I'm going to go off into production management. I'm going to go off into engineering or into art and design. So as a degree, it's a really strong, good foundational degree for a range of different subject areas. So those first three years gives you the part one. And part one is related to, to the REBA, uh, Royal Institute of British Architects, who are the professional body that oversee the course at Ulster. So they say you've received your part one after three years. And then what do you do? If you wish to progress as an architect, you go into practice for a year. So you go out as an architectural assistant into an architect's practice. And if you recall, I mentioned on the slides that we prepare students for that by bringing in employers to talk and discuss uh, what's expected from me and what skills are required for me to develop in, in practice. So you go into practice for a year after those three years. And after that year, you come back into the university for the masters. And the masters in architecture, we call it the MARC, the masters in architecture, is a, a two year course. And it's the same as you would have a masters in any other discipline, except I suppose it's, it's still in architecture. So people think it's particularly long, but it's a, a normal two year a masters course. And at the end of that two years, you come out with a, a part two, is what the uh, Royal Institute of British Architects uh, call the, uh, the degree. So it's a part two degree. And then officially you're finished in university terms, in academic terms, but then to register as an architect, you do a year then after that in practice. So you're being paid, you're out in employment, you're a regular person at work, for that uh, last year of practice, which if you add them all up, okay, it's, it's seven, yeah? <laughs> so the first three years in the university is your degree. The fourth year, you're in practice, you're earning money, you're being employed, that's fourth year. Two years of a master's, which would be the same in any regular master's course, two years is fifth and sixth year, and then the seventh year, the last year, again, you're in practice. So you're earning, but most importantly, is you're learning the skills in practice. So at the end of that seventh year, you take your examinations to become a professionally chartered architect. So it's three, one year in practice, two years in the university, one year in practice, and then you register as a professional architect. It is what it is because it's a really highly sought after degree, a highly sought after a subject area. 
Yeah, no, that's great. That's, that's fascinating. One thing I'm learning so much today as well about the, the duration, the, the structure. Um, I'm sure everybody else who's joined us today will have learned more about architecture. And of course, I suppose one of the things, if you've been through university already, uh, what you realize is that that time will fly in as well. Each of those you will find if you take into account your, your placement and, of course, the various elements of uh, that study duration. Um, quick question. And um, actually, Johnny, sorry. sorry Actually, it's a really good point you just said, um, and probably probably Holly will feel likewise. Once you're on that architecture journey, it actually becomes who you are. It becomes yep. <laughs> part of yeah. life, part of who you are as a person. So it's less about you know I'm at university or I'm working. It's actually you become uh, an architect in how you think and how you live, and it actually it's it's not so much about. Uh, seeing it in numbers of years, but it's actually just your journey for the rest of your life or as part of, of who you now are as a career path. And, and do you um, have any sort of placement during your master's study? Well, actually, I'll say that it's, it's uh, traditionally it's two years in, Johnny, and then the year out. But actually, currently at Ulster, we are looking at merging uh, that year in practice with the master's. So it would potentially be a year in the university and a year in practice combined. Uh, so you'd be part in and part out. And that's something we're, we're looking at absolutely uh, because of current um, moves within the profession and the industry to align um, university with industry uh, in a model, um, which obviously makes it more economical as well for the student. But those are options that we're absolutely looking at. Okay, and we'll have a question here from someone who is really, really interested in studying architecture. They are in um, North Year 13, um, but don't do art. Um, any advice for them? So, uh, and yes, we have students and they come to me at Open Day and, and they say this, this very thing. Um, so what's important then, as I mentioned maybe in the slide, is just yeah. to think about architecture as a career, and you start to follow some of those guidelines I suggested. So you start to involve yourself in the subject, read around the subject, you start to sketch, you start to draw, look at the world around you, start to read magazines and journals and papers about architecture, and immerse yourself in the subject area that you start to develop a portfolio based on your experiences, based on your capabilities, um, based on your, your academic, your sound academic knowledge, but you start to develop that now um, as early as possible. Um, because as I said in the, in the slide, um, if you don't have that art at GCSE, uh, at A level, we will be looking for a portfolio. So now is the time to start to consider if architecture is your career path, how can I actively start to engage in some of those journeys and some of those principles to get there and that's about engaging with sketching drawing and looking around exhibiting and and travel now it was said to me once many years back that um an architect uh architecture student needs to have some sort of appreciation for light and space and um, is that true and and for you holly uh, when you were thinking about your portfolio um did that come into play? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, excuse me, yes, just because I had accidentally had taken an interest in it. I didn't actively think, okay, oh my goodness, I want to be an architect. I need to now draw everything to do with, you know, shading in my drawings or constantly draw spaces. I just kind of drew and engaged with what I liked. And um, my attention was drawn to light and space when I actually got in the course. So I was already doing um, the, sort of the observational skills that I needed to succeed in the course, but I just hadn't noticed and they hadn't been honed and hadn't been directed. So um, I had a, had a great tutor this year called uh, Niall McFriarty and he, I remember once uh, we had to go for a site visit for a project that was in a specific area and he said, you know, sometimes you just need to sit there and cross your legs and take a minute to just feel how the wind blows in your skin and see how the light is in the morning and the afternoon and the evening and you know really feel the space and go to buildings and sit there for an hour 
and just see how you feel. It is something that's taught as well and that you could be quite lucky to have noticed that you like already. Well, are we still there, yeah? I'm sorry, did I break up? Oh. No, yeah, just, just pause there. I was say, no, that's fine. No, that's great. It's, it's, it's just, again, it's, it's something that was mentioned to me, I suppose, during open days by a colleague. It could have been you, Martia, a few years mm -hmm. ago. I was always interested to, to understand, you know, what that concept of light and space meant for somebody who's sketching or sculpting or, or, or drawing or painting or whatever it may be. Um, and hopefully that, that sheds some light on any of our applicants today who, who are considering. Um, look, that's all the questions that we have gone through today. Um, I'm sure if there's any other questions, folks who are, who are still online with us, um, we'll hang on for a couple of minutes, five minutes, um, and we'll get those uh, answered uh, off air, so to speak. Um, so all that's left for me to do is to thank uh, Martina for a very thorough uh, and fascinating overview of architecture uh, at Belfast, uh, the University, of course, uh, and for Holly for her insight uh, as a French student of ours as well. I think it's brought something really good to the webinar uh, for everybody to listen to. No, we're very Johnny, uh, yeah, Johnny sorry. I wonder, sorry to, to cut across you. I'm just looking at the, the, the chats there and there is, um, I think a Jack has asked the question, if I can just respond to, to it briefly. Yes, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he's asked, um, he's asked, after achieving part one, you're absolutely right, Jack, that's three years, would you then be qualified to work as an architectural technician? So architectural technician course is, is a different course. Um, so uh, it is regulated by a different professional body called SEAT. And, uh, and what I would suggest, Jack, is have a look on the university website at the ATM course, Architectural Technology and Management course, because that is a course that actually is developed uh, for architectural technicians. Um, so please, uh, the course director is, is Gareth, and he'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions um, about the course. Uh, but just a pointer, uh, sorry, Johnny, just a pointer to uh, direct Jack there on, on his question. Yeah, no problem. And I think uh, Gareth is hosting a webinar for architectural technology management next week. Uh, that will be listed on our website at ulster.ac.uk forward slash events. And if you want to find out any more about ATM, uh, as uh, Martina called it there. Um, so again, look, um, we are very mindful that we have um, potential uh, students today joining us who are considering um, and are making their final decision uh, for architecture starting in September. And of course, those of you who are thinking about architecture for 2021. So hopefully you've learned a lot today. I know I have um, from Holly and from Martina. Um, all that's left for me to do is to thank you for joining us. Um, of course, uh, wish you all the best um, uh, and, and hopefully um, we'll uh, get the other side of this uh, COVID-19 situation uh, uh, in a better place. But hopefully we'll see you all um, at Ulster University in September 2020 or 2021. Thank you.